And thank you, Tamar. If you'd all have a seat, please. Recently, we did a series called SAD, which was on stress, anxiety, depression, and doubt. And uh, in discussions with people, and with the, uh, when it came to that series, we found out that we may have missed or overlooked an area that we should have talked about, even though we tied it to some of the verses, but we didn't because we actually wanted to have it separate, and that is on worry. So today, we're going to talk about taking worry and turning it into worship. So from worry to worship. So if you'd all bow your heads with me, please, and we'll dive into today's message. Heavenly Father, we know there are tons of things going on in this world right now, Lord, and there's so many things that we just can't control. So God, at the end of the day, Lord, for these struggles that we have personally, would you show us and teach us how, through your word, God, that all these worries that we have, whether they're 1, 5, 10, 15, whether they're small, whether they're big, whatever it is, Lord, that they can consume us at times and it, it takes our focus off of you. So show us today through your word, which is what we try to focus on every single week, through your word, how we can take this worry and turn it into worship. How we can take all the things that we struggle with personally, God, and just hand them over to you. And God, we know that uh, you use all these things for your glory. We pray that others can see this through us. But Lord, help us to tackle us individually so that we can share it with others. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So if I were to ask you if you're a worrier, and if, I, if you were honest about it, I would have to say that every one of us at some point in some time would admit that there is something that you worry about. And how you deal with that worry says a lot about where you are as far as being a believer. Now, that's kind of a tough statement because we want to think that we turn this worry over, but at the same time, if we didn't have these worries, if we didn't, uh, if they didn't pop up at, at times, we wouldn't have this opportunity to turn to God. So none of us are perfect. So having a worry now and then, or, or having multiple worries, you're going to find out today it's actually okay. It's something that that is going to happen. It's what we do with that worry that makes all the difference in the world. And it doesn't make all the difference in necessarily the grand world that we look at, but it makes a difference in your world, and it makes a difference in my world. It makes a difference in how I deal with loved ones. It makes a difference with how I deal with family. It makes a difference with how I deal with my work and where I go to school, how I deal with customers, how I deal with coworkers, how, and fill in the blank. Whatever it might be that causes this worry to happen, at many times, it, it can consume us, or it can also just kind of pop up here and there, but it tends to try to pull us away from a God that loves us. So, this morning, I decided that I would try and throw some worry at someone. And so, about, uh, when I, I usually get here, you know, a half an hour or so uh, ahead of time, and Rick and Mary Kay and Lisa and Don and them are usually here, and the praise team's here practicing, but I decided today to drive a little bit slower, so that uh, about, you know, 20 minutes or so, I, it, until, you know, the old um, time started, I would come rolling into the parking lot. And the reason for that is every time it's time changing Sunday, there's always people showing up late or, you know, uh, my favorite one's in the spring because people walk in halfway into the into the service and go, oh, you know, I didn't know about the time change. And we try to warn everyone, you know, what are you going to do? So I sent Rick a text and I said, hey, just woke up, alarm didn't go off. I hope you have something prepared for today. And I, I sent it to him as I was sitting in the parking lot, and then I walked inside, and, and then I went, instead of coming in here, I went to the back, where into the kitchen area, where Mary Kay and Lisa were. And so I'm standing there having a conversation with them, and I told them this is what I did. And I'm just waiting for Rick to come out, and waiting for Rick to come out, and he's not coming out, not coming out. And I'm like, okay, like, when's this going to happen? You know, pretty soon he's going to come busting through the doors. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So finally, after having the conversation with them, I, I'll, I'll go check on him. So I came in and he had made it to the second step and that's where he had passed out. He was face down on the carpet. So, no. I looked at him and he was like, I, I went up and he just laughed and I said, so how much worry did you have? Were you like worried at all? He was like, nope. Because see, he's the IT guy and he knew enough at that point that he would just put up a pass message and it would be like everyone had heard it for the first time and he would just, you know, go ahead and get through that. So he had, he had already outsmarted me but all the worry had gone away and he literally said, I, I wasn't worried one bit. I'm sure there was a little bit, but, uh, you know, but when it first hits, where do you take it? So, what is it that worries you? What is it that consumes you the most? Because in a little while, we're going to take a look at that, and you get a chance to look at it personally. You're going to get a chance to look within, and all I'm asking you to do is to be honest with yourself. Because your worries and my worries may be different. 
You may have uh, no children, so you don't worry about raising kids. You may have tons of kids, and you worry about raising them. You may be in a position within a relationship to where uh, you're worried about what the next step might be and, and worried about you know if you're ready to make a commitment or even if that's a step that you want to take. You may have worries that, oh, you know, I struggle with past commitments, I struggle with finances, whatever it might be, but every day it consumes you. Some of you may even worry about whether or not you're going to have a job next week or next month or next year. Some of us worry about the pandemic. Some of us worry about the election that's coming up. There's worry after worry after worry that you have that I may not have, and they may also be worries that we share together. The great thing about this is God handles all of these. And so you have to ask yourself when it comes to these worries, when they pop up, not if they pop up, but when they pop up. Worries are something that are very personal, but we also have a God that is so personal that he loved the world so much, but he also loved you so much. And so where is it that we turn to? God's going to give us not just a direction, but he's also going to show us that there is a way out of every single worry you have. And so knowing that, whether it's a small worry, a big worry, even a medium size worry, knowing that God can handle this through his word is part of the reason that we want to continue to turn this back to him. So let's define it and then we'll tackle it. And let's take these different worries that we have, the worries that you have, and then we're going to look at them in a little while and then we're going to take care of them one, one by one. And we walk out today, we're going to feel so great and everything's going to be great and we're all going to be happy and then the Browns are going to play and all the worries are going to come right back. Right? No. Do the Browns play today, Rick? Okay, so there we go. And he's already worried. Are you worried at all? Always. They always. There we go. So we're going to help Rick with his worries when it comes to the Browns. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 is where we are going to start. And these are the words of Jesus. And literally, he is going to teach us about worry. Now, the interesting thing is, he just got done teaching about money, which is the biggest thing that we struggle with, which keeps us away from our walk with God. But then he takes this discussion about the money that we have, which is really God's anyway, and he turns it then back because Jesus knows that once we start to focus on the wrong things, that it brings this stuff up on the inside that affects the things on the outside. So here's what Jesus has to say, starting in verse 25. He says, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to them than they are? Can, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all of your needs. So Jesus is actually having this discussion, and people are listening to him, and he's kind of having a little bit of a sermon. And as it goes through and we, and we read those words, something in there goes, yep, that's something I worry about. Yeah, I, I, I tend to worry about, uh, you know, uh, uh, being able to, to purchase groceries so that I can feed my family. I tend to worry about, you know, what it is that I'm going to wear. I tend to worry about, you know, is there going to be um, a, enough for my retirement? Is there going to be, we go through all these different worries and Jesus understands all those. Because it's life. And because it's very natural. So when you have these worries, know that they're going to pop up from the inside and that you aren't alone. Because if I would have said, okay, how many of you worry about your future retirement? You know, maybe 10 people raise their hand. How many of you worry about whether or not you're going to uh, get a promotion or a bonus? Some of us would raise our hand. How many of you worry about whether or not your company is still going to be open in 30 days or 60 days or 90 days? Someone would raise our hand. How many of you worried about whether or not you're going to have a good Christmas? Someone would raise our hands. How many of you worried about this whole pandemic taking a further turn and they're going to start shutting things down again? And some would raise our hand. Every one of us has different worries and yet every one of us have the same worries. So let's go back and break these down. Verse 25, Jesus says this, That is why I tell you not to worry about your everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink, enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food, and your body more than clothing. So see, what Jesus is sharing here is that God has already taken care of the details. 
And if you're not sure how he's taken the details, rather than look on the inside, take a look at the outside. Everything we have is in complete control. The world still spins at the same rate. Everything is because one of another. The seasons change and then they, they come and go. And, and we have the same consistency throughout our year and through everything around us. I was talking with a young man this week and, and he was sharing with me that when everything gets out of control, at one point it was actually perfect. And so when you take everything back to the perfect, you realize that once it starts from a perfect place, it's at that point that things start to spin out of control. And it's that way pretty much everywhere in life. If you're a believer, there was one point where you took that perfect step to a perfect God who is your perfect Savior. And then something happened where it started to spin out of control. You know, you were on fire and then someone said something. Someone put you down. Someone said, that's not true. Someone said, what about this? And someone threw some, some kind of wrench in it somewhere. And this faith that you had and this fire that you have for your faith, all of a sudden it got rocked a little bit. And rather than turn back to that faith, we started listening to all those other kind of things. And the place that it was perfect, now all of a sudden, didn't seem so perfect. And maybe you didn't know everything. And you didn't know every single verse. And you didn't know how to share. So rather than turning it back to the place where it was perfect, you just tried to handle it yourself. And so the worry continued. But see, God took care of the big, but he also takes care of the small. And so that's why this verse that Jesus is sharing is, we think of the big picture, but we don't think about it when it comes to us personally. We have to take our worry personally and understand that we deal and we serve a God that is so loving in the grand scheme, but he's also so loving when it comes to us specifically. So when you start to think about all those big things, and then you start to realize that it's affecting you, realize that it's affecting others. And especially for non-believers who don't have a God to turn to, who don't realize that God loves them, where is it they're going to go? How is it they're ever going to see any faith if we are not showing that to them? And so we've got to take it back to that perfect so that we can help them get to that place of that perfect as well, which is God. Takes the next verse, and the next verse is this. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? So, whenever we think about the future, it doesn't allow us to live in our, in our present. And many times, we end up going to our past, which is where our struggles are, which causes even more worry. And so just as the birds, which is, is God is using, or Jesus is using this example of once again the things that are around us, they don't worry and they don't store up and they don't have to. Why? Because they already know that they're being taken care of. And so if you worry about all these things in the future, you don't live in the day. And that is a worry that many of us deal with. And if I were to ask you personally, is this something that you struggle with? Do you worry about things that are a month from now or a year from now or 10 years from now? Or when your kids hit the next stage or your grandkids, they hit a stage, whatever it might be. Or when you hit a stage within your relationship or when you hit a stage within your finances, do you worry about getting to those different milestones? And you get so caught up and consumed in those that you don't focus on the here and now. And Jesus says those are the worries. But you matter more to God. This world matters more to God, and you personally matter more than God. So use the birds as the example. And when you see them flying around to understand that Jesus gave us that example for the things around us that points back to the perfect. Next verse. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Can they? I mean, you have to answer that question. I have to answer that question. Because, see, if we just focus upon that worry, we never get to the worship. And we focus upon that worry, it starts to eat us up from the inside out. It starts to take all of our time away. We start getting to the point where we can't sleep. We start getting to the point where we're completely restless. Our schedules get messed up. We get screwed up. It, it, whatever it might be. Life just gets in the way. The stress happens. The anxiety happens. The depression happens. The doubt happens. It's worry after worry after worry after worry. In other words, the worry is so harmful. And yet God wants to say, I am here to be helpful. I am here for you. You can't add a day to your life anyway, so rather than focus on all those things in the future, let's get back to the here and now. And if you don't, you're going to bring harm to yourself through the very worry that consumes you. Jesus continues because he knows there's more to it. He says, and why worry about your clothing? Alright, real quick here, just because I know I have a lot of ladies. In the, in the, so, how many ladies here worry about their clothing? 
let's be honest. Come on. We can raise, all right, this is not a, a raising the... I, let's raise the hands, all right? All right. All right. So put your hands down. How many guys here worry about their clothing? Okay, so this is... I even have wives elbowing their husbands. So, see, like, like us guys, you know, it's... If we can get a pair of lounge pants, you know, and a hoodie, if I can get a pair of jeans and a flannel, you know, um, I don't, I don't care that you know my shoes aren't you know 2020 style. I don't, you know, whatever it might be. I don't worry about my handbag, you know, matching my jacket and my watch now matching my mask. I don't worry about that kind of stuff. But for women, that this is a worry that they truly, truly have, right? Because ladies want, they want to look good, and guys, they don't give a rip. So the reason I'm sharing this is that guys, we we have to be concerned for the, for our spouses and for our significant others when it comes to those things. And so when they ask you the question, how does this look together? You know, does this look good? Is this what it, we need to answer it honestly, even though it's not something that we care about, because they care about it. And so we have to be very careful as to how we approach that, because it's like you're asking me a question that I don't really care about, and I mean it looks fine. And then they go out and people are like looking at them, staring at them, and then they realize it's not fine. I looked terrible and I knew this was bad and then I listened to you. Well, ladies, that's kind of back on you. You shouldn't listen to some guy that doesn't, they don't care so much. You know, you look at them and they're in their, you know, they're in their normal garb that they're always in and they weren't concerned when they left. So as long as you look decent, you're going to look way better than they are. So that should take the worry away, right? But it doesn't. When the seasons change, you know, ladies, you change your purses. How many of you change your purses this way? Oh, the, 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 uh, the, the leaves are changing, the weather's changing, so we've got to change the color of the purse that we, that we carry, right? Guys never change their wallet. That, that thing has to fall apart, and, and the duct tape has to stop working that they tried to mend it six times. They, they just don't care about it. But it's still a worry that ladies have. Now, here is my thought as to why. And I'm glad you're all sitting down. God made everything from the ground, except for woman. He made woman from a living, breathing being. It was his crowning achievement. It was his most beautiful achievement. And they want to stay beautiful. So if you want to honor God, guys, you better be honoring your girl. And you better be taking the time to say, you know what? That looks awful. That is the worst combination of clothes I've ever seen. No, you don't want to do that. You need to be kind in your words and uplifting in your words, but to share with them, listen, I, I'm not the best at color and stuff like that, but I don't think those stripes match those polka dots. And you can do it in the right way. Just think about that for a second. So the things, the reason I'm sharing this is there's things that are going to matter to others that are in your life that you care about. And it's okay for you to share when it's on your heart so that you can bring comfort to a situation. You can help in a situation. And our words go a long way. This is going to be important here in a little bit. This is kind of the middle part of the worry. And sometimes this is a specific worry. But we're all in this together. We're going to take that worry to worship in just a little bit. It continues. He says, Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. Verse 30, And if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown to the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? See, worry saps us when it comes to our faith. And if we have a God and we believe that we have a God that cares so much about the world and so much about all the big things, why is it we don't believe that He cares so much about us personally? He cares so much about this world, which means He cares about everything within this world. He's already talked about, Jesus already talked about the wildflowers and the birds and all the things around. If He cares so much about that, then don't you believe that He would care that much about you? Because if you don't, and if I don't, it's not a question of what we believe. It's really a question of how much we believe. And yet Jesus shared that if you'll just have the faith of a mustard seed, which is such one of the smallest seeds... That that's the kind of faith that he's looking for. If you just have that childlike faith where you don't really care how you're looking or how the day's going or whatever it might be, that you're completely giving it to God, that's what Jesus is challenging us here to look at. 
Yeah, you're going to have worries, and yeah, they're going to be every day, and you're going to have worries that are bigger, and they're going to be down the road, but focus upon today. But know this, at the end of the day, that God loves you so much, He cares about you so much, that He gave everything. He solved it. He solved it through His Son, His one and only Son. He gave everything then, and He continues to give you everything now through His Holy Spirit. It's a promise He gives you. So that worry and all the things that you struggle with, Jesus said, I will send a comfort and a counselor for you. Do you seek that comfort and that counsel? Because God has this for you, whatever the worry is, no matter how small, no matter how big. Jesus continues and he says this, so don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. So, when that happens, and when we get back to ourselves, what this tends to show is that we're not really using the faith and the understanding of who God is to us, especially as a believer. See, when we take that personal step, and we take that step to ask a personal Savior into our lives, it's that step of faith. It's that time when everything was perfect. So, whatever the worry is that's causing you to get out of control, know this. It's spinning more and more and faster and faster in life, and you get further and further away from the perfect, you have to get back to the perfect so that you can rest in the fact that it's not worry that dominates you, but instead it's worship. So how is it that we do that then? Next verse. These are the words of Jesus. These aren't my words. These are the words of Jesus. Loving Savior. All powerful. Miracle worker. The last song talked about all the different names. There's so many different names that you can find about who God is and not just who He is, but what He means to you personally. Jesus says this in verse, 30, verse 33. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Above any worry. Above any doubt. Above any fear. Above any loss. Above any what if. Above any why. Above any how do I handle. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So God has this. So at times when we worry, and then we start to worry so much where it's almost, it starts to rock our faith a little bit, and we start to question God, and we can ask questions of God. He can take it. But it's when we seek Him, and when we turn this back to Him, that he, we realize that He has got our back. He's not on our back. He has our back. It's the same way that we treat our children. It's the same way that we treat our jan grandchildren. At the end of the day, we have them, and we never stop being a parent. God never stops being a parent. He knows you're going to worry. He knows you have those small worries and those big worries. He wants you to take those worries and to turn them into worship. He wants you to seek Him first in everything. Next verse, verse 34. Jesus closes it with this. He says, so don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So we're on Sunday. So let's focus on Sunday. So here's what we're going to do. Whether you're online or sitting here right now. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to look within. And here's where we're going to be. I want you to picture yourself in a jail cell. And as you're sitting in that jail cell, I want you to ask yourself, what is the first thing that you would do? So you're in this jail cell, and as you picture it, this is what I picture. Maybe you picture some of the same things. You picture bars. You picture bars that go from the, the ceiling all the way to, to the ground. And, and they're there. And then, the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to grab for that door. And you realize that it's locked. And you look around and there's no one with a key. There's no one that's wanting to open that door for you. And so you're consumed by wanting to get out and to break free. And then you realize that you can't. And so you go and you sit back down on your bed and you ask yourself, how is it that I got here? What is it that took place? And you start to think about the struggles and you start to go through the worries and you start to, to take the things that you've done to have you end up in this jail cell. 
And then something amazing happens. When you realize that you can't get out, you start to focus upon, well, what is it I can do for when I get out of this? I won't make these decisions anymore. I won't hang out with these people anymore. I won't listen to what others may say. I won't follow along with what everyone else is doing. And the longer that you sit there, the more you realize that I have got to make this change. But the only one that can make this change within me is God. And so you start to pray. And you look around within that jail cell, and there's nothing but you and these, these three walls and these bars. And so the only place that you can turn to then at that point is God. See, that's what worry does. It completely jails us. And we can't see past the bars. And we can't see outside of the walls. And we realize that there's no one that is coming to save us. There's no one that understands our world. There, it's, we're all locked down. There's no way out. And that's where we make the change from worry to worship. Keep your eyes closed. Head bowed. You are in your jail cell right now. I did not allow you out. How dare you open your eyes and look at me. See, that's what command and that's what worry and that's what fear does. But let's watch what faith does instead. See, when we turn worry to concern, all of a sudden, the concern, we look around the jail cell and we realize that, you know what? I've locked myself inside this jail cell. And when I stand up and take concern and take that next step, and when I seek God first, I realize that the key is on the inside of the door. I never looked at it before. And so I turned that key and I opened up the door and now I'm able to step out. So the worry changed to concern. And the concern allowed me to break myself free and to get back out. Now I want you to look at me. Worry consumes us. It jails us. It holds us in. There's no way out of it. Concern takes the worry from ourselves to someone else. Concern says, oh my goodness, I can take action with this. This is what Jesus is saying. When you worry, no matter how small, no matter how big, it consumes every single part of you and you jail yourself. And it becomes about you and it becomes about me. It becomes about how I can fix this and how I can do better and all these things. But Jesus said this, seek him first. Because when you seek him first, all of a sudden there's that peace, there's that comfort, there's that counsel, there's that guidance that takes all of those things away. So if you're a worrier, you've locked yourself in. And when the worry comes, you're locked in. But when you turn it to concern, it no longer becomes about me. It becomes about how I deal with things, about how I focus upon things. It becomes about how I turn them over to God first. It comes back to what Jesus says to seek him first. And guess what? He will give you everything you need. And so now the concern comes to the other person. Now the concern comes to how I can help. Now the concern turns to what are the next steps I can take with God first who loves me so much that he takes care of every single one of my needs. And I'm going to focus on here. I'm going to focus on today. I'm going to focus on this moment because I can't get to tomorrow until tomorrow comes. And when tomorrow gets here, it'll be today again and that's where I can focus. So if you're someone today that deals with worry, and we all do, and if worry piles upon worry, piles upon worry, you have to know this and you have to remember this. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. God so loves you that he understands that you'll have those worries. God so gets it that while you're focusing upon everything for tomorrow, he wants you to see him within today. So that when you have loss, he is there and he brings you comfort. When you're not sure of what the next step is, that he wants to guide you. When you find that you're angry, when you find you're complacent, when you find that you're prideful, when you find your arrogance, that when you stop and seek him first, that he can make all of that go away. And when you see yourself in the midst of that jail cell and there's no way out, that you realize that when you focus on today and focus on him, 
that he takes that worry to worship. He takes that worry to concern. And it's at that point that you can love others just as God loves you. Because in the end, love never fails. And that concern becomes love. And it's a step of faith that you and I take in every single moment that God has blessed us with. So I want you to challenge yourself this week. When you find yourself worrying, I want you to stop for a moment and just close your eyes long enough and take a look at your jail cell. And then I want you to stop long enough in that jail cell to realize that if I would just stop long enough to pray, that God can take this all away. So that when you open your eyes, that you can say, what's my next step of faith that I can take with God? And all worry, and all fear, and all doubt, and every anxious moment goes away. Seek first His kingdom, and He will fulfill every one of your needs. Stay within today, because tomorrow has its own worries. And when you do that, you turn your worry to worship with a God that loves each of us with the same amount of love, with a God that cares so much about each one of us that he gave everything. Right where you sit, if you just close your eyes for a moment again, I want you to head back into your jail cell and ask yourself, is that where you want to stay? Is that where you want to go to later in the day with things that you can't control anyway? Tamar and Andy are going to come up and they're going to sing an invitation song here in a moment. As we go through our days, the worries are going to come. They're going to happen. But God's already taken care of it. So whether it's your work, whether it's the things that are going on in your family, whether the things within relationship, finances, whatever it may be, whatever it is of those worries that crop up and they pop up and they're going to... Would you challenge yourself to seek God first in them? Would you stay within these moments? And would you recognize that He is there for you and He is there for me? And He can make all this go away. Heavenly Father, Lord, there are times where we have questions about things and we just, we don't have every answer. And we get it. But God, we thank you so much for the words Jesus shared. Because, Lord, honestly, there are times that we worry. They, it just pops up. But, God, if we never take that step back to you, then we're never taking that step of faith. And if we're not a believer and we've never taken that step to you, then we can't take that step of faith. Lord, in the end of the day, worry becomes about us, but it's not really about us when we turn it to worship. Help us stay focused upon you. Help us to turn to you continually. Help us to cast all the doubts, all the fears, everything aside. And help us to trust you. Lord, we love you. And as we stand here to sing, God, all the worries that are going to pop into our minds here shortly, Lord, help us to turn those to worship as we lift our voices and our hearts to you. Lord, we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Would you all please rise? Each week we have a moment of invitation. And this is that time that we talked about when things get out of control a little bit, but we have a chance to step back to the perfect. And so if you are someone today that is here, or someone that's online, that you've never taken that step of faith to where you've asked Jesus into your heart, that's taking that step to the perfect. See, because God loves each one of us so much, no matter what the struggle is, no matter what the past is, no matter what the worry is, He looks at us and He loves us, and He understands that we have flaws. He understands that we have mistakes, and He understands that we have past. But He wants to hold your today, and He wants you to know that all those tomorrows that we worry about, he's got them anyway. But it starts with a step toward him. So if you've never taken that step today, I want to challenge you. I want you to put all those worries and fears aside. 
you know, there are three times that, that in the Bible where instead of worry, the word is used as concern. It's actually when it goes way back and you do this seventh level of this, that, and the other thing, whatever it might be. And it's Paul when he wrote in 1 Corinthians. And the concern always comes back to the person. The concern comes back to the spouse or the family. The concern comes back to uh, the friend or um, people within our communities, whatever it might be. It always goes back to the person. And then also the concern always goes to God. One of the concerns that it talks about, though, are for the other believers. So many times we forget to pray for other believers, of which many of you are believers. But today, that concern has to start with those who haven't taken that step to the perfect. And so, right where you stand, I just want you to close your eyes and bow your eyes for a moment, because this is between you and God, but I want to be able to talk to you about this. If you have never taken that step, if you've never taken that step to the perfect, if you worry, if you fear, if you doubt, if you struggle with everyday life, and you've never stopped long enough to give it to God, a God that loves you so much that he gave everything, it's as simple as reaching up to him and saying, I admit that I need you. I believe that you sent your son Jesus for me, and I want to walk with you. I want to ask you into my heart as my powerful, my passionate, and my personal Savior. And it's this step of faith that I take in reaching out to you today. If that's a step you've never taken before and you want to take that today, just right where you stand, would you just raise your hand? Okay, now every head is bowed and every eye is closed. You're back in your jail cell. What is it that is causing you to worry so much? And where is it that you're turning to? This week, when every worry comes up, seek God. Turn to Him. And most of all, trust Him that He can take all those away. Whatever the worry might be. On Tuesday, there is an election. Maybe you're worried that your vote doesn't count. Turn it to concern and go out and be heard. This week, when we're out and about and people are being critical and loud and unkind, throw a smile their way. Make eye contact. Say a kind word. Cast all of those fears, those worries, and everything aside and show others that you are concerned enough that you can be a light before them. And that you matter. And that in the process that they matter too. Lord, help us to once again take all these worries and turn them to concerns. Help us to seek you in everything we say and everything we do. God, help us to take that step of faith every single day toward the perfect, even when our world seems like it's so out of control. And as we sing this last verse, Lord, help us turn that worry into worship and to carry that with us every single day. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.